And our next speaker today is called Eliu Choshi, and right. he's uh, and he's founder at Eura, which is an open source uh, design startup, uh, and it helps open source projects improve their visual design. Also, he's a um, Mozilla tech speaker, a, Fendo a Fedora ambassador, and a board member at Open Labs. So, let's welcome him. Thank you, thank you. Can you hear me well? Can you hear me well? All's fine? Perfect. Come in, come in, don't be afraid. So I, actually, this is a funny thing because like a lot of people like pronounce my name wrong. It's like when a lot of people say Koshi, that means recycle bin in Albania. So I'd rather say Choshi because Choshi means corner and I like that better. Uh, <laughs> so hi, I'm Elio. I'm actually not a programmer. I'm a f contributor at Open Labs and many other projects um, in Albania. I do mostly design, and because I like design so much, I actually did a startup about open source design. We actually help many other open source projects with design, for example, um, projects which are great, which really a lot of people use, they might not be able, for my grandfather, he cannot use that, you know, because it's from a terminal or whatever, and they have a hard time using that. So we help these open source projects uh, help um, improve the UX and UI of this, exactly these interfaces. But that's a long story. I'm also a Mozilla tech speaker. You might know Mozilla, like from Firefox. Who is using Chrome? Anyone who is using Chrome? Get out, like, can you? <laughs> no, it's uh, OK. Uh, but um, yeah, we, we might be able to chat a little bit more about Firefox later on. And I'm also a SitePoint community manager. Any one of you who's like maybe a technical contributor might have heard of SitePoint about our articles. And we write, we write a lot about different technologies, mostly web-related. So yeah, that's a little bit about me. Um, so the topic which I want to like provoke a discussion on is about open source. You know, whenever you like go talk to people, hey, it's open source, and they think, ah, the code, like code, like hard code, I don't understand that. Why should I care about that? And this saddens me quite often because open source is not only about putting the code over, throwing it over the wall and, hey, it's open source, you can grab it. It's much more about that, actually. It's, it's about the culture and about sharing and about like opening up many other possibilities and opportunities in open source, which is not only the code. And for example, I'm not a programmer. I might be able to hack a bit of CSS and like, wow, I just coded, like, that's amazing. But that's, that's all, right? And I found, found myself really well in open source communities, although I'm no programmer. And I really want to uh, give also other people this chance because I think like we open source communities can benefit quite a lot from people who actually are no programmers. And in this case, I think that in many other like translations, community building, or even design, we need to offer people a very easy way, as we do with programmers, to contribute to open source. So there's this thing about designers and developers. Anyone of you who's like probably has worked on GitHub or like on any other enterprise section you are like doing this great program, you work on this, and now you need to send it to the designer who's like doing the UI. You probably fight quite a lot because you want this function to be happening in that program, but the designer says, hey, this looks ugly, and stuff like that. So we have a lot of fights between designers and developers, and I think this is related on a more personal level like free software and open source, which was later called open source, has a history of over 30 years. And back then, it was a nice community of people working together, sharing knowledge, sharing code, and designers were not part of that. Actually, designers have always worked on their own, designing logos, designing brandings, someone in this great studio of them 
working alone on that thing. While developers have been always like on LAN parties, playing together, hacking together, so we have like a lot of a huge gap between working as a designer and working as a developer. So once you understand this distinction quite a bit, you can like, we can like have a discussion around that and fix this. So I think it's related mostly about how we see each other. And me as a designer, sorry if there's any other designer here, I'm going to talk a bit aggressive about our ego. We, we lack a bit of empathy, you know? Like, hey, this, this client of mine says make the logo bigger. Us, ah, he's, he's so stupid, he doesn't know anything about doing that. Like, this attitude is not really helpful when you work in open source. When you work in open source, like no one cares if you are a programmer, a developer, a designer, a translator, or whatever. Everyone is, should be the same. And every contribution should be actually um, valued. So I think something which designers lack is empathy. And once, once we understand that, hey, maybe that other guy has a good good message to give with that. Maybe we should value that and not only bring it down as a designer. So I think like empathy is like the first step to work closer together. If there's no empathy, you could just quit the project, I think. Like this is the core of the, of the open source contribution process, I think. So there are quite some inside jokes in this, in this field and it's, it's quite hard as a designer in open source because you, know, you, know, you are used to like, exclusive things and fancy cars in this case. While in open source, say, hey man, you wanna come? Just join in. And like, it's very hard when you use as a designer and you find yourself in this place with hippies. It's like, what should I do here? But like, there's a lot of things you can actually contribute to here. So one thing we should understand is that sharing is caring. Like, do you see these photos on Facebook like a lot? Like, my friends always post Facebook uh, photos and they say, copyright some guy, you know? Um, why do we need to do this? Why do we need to take copyright of our own work? Like, who's going to steal it? Like, are going people to make money out of our work? Are we that famous that people will steal our work and make huge money out of it? I don't, I don't think that, I mean. So if that's not the case, if you are not a millionaire or whatever and you are not afraid of that, why you should like license your work under copyright? You can just use a copyleft license like Creative Commons. Who of you is a music fan, Nine Inch Nails? Anyone heard of Nine Inch Nails? Nice, nice, nice. So Nine Inch Nails, they published two of their albums under Creative Commons license. The license was a non-commercial license, so all people who used that could not make money out of it, but they could like listen to their own liking. And because this album was free, people were downloading it, and the, and the ni and Nine Inch Nails saw where it was most downloaded, and they were touring their 2012 tour in this exact locations. And they made a huge money out of that, by the way. So, for example, if they see that most downloads are coming from Sofia, they would do a tour in, tour in Sofia, and all people from Sofia would come to the tour, which is quite smart. They had a huge problems with their publishers, with their records, but after they did that, they were happy because, like, sales were going up and down. Um, up, not down, but yeah. <laughs> so, last year I stumbled upon open source design. It's a quite interesting community of designers and developers working together to make open source more user-friendly and more usable. So you can check it out. If you are open source maintainer or developer, you can even request for help here, and we are going to help you. If you need a logo, if you need a website, or if you just generally want to have a better looking project, you can check this out. And I ha had quite some lessons from this community, in fact, which I also applied in different projects like Mozilla. So at Mozilla, these are like 25 logos I created. And throughout the years, 
I'm not an employee at Mozilla, I need to say this, I'm just a volunteer, but there's a huge of value you can put into a project like this because there are so much uh, needs for non-technical contributions in open source projects. We always think like, hey, it's all about the code, but actually like a lot of project needs also some other kind of contributions. And I was really happy and proud to have worked on this. But on the other side, it was just Elio doing all this stuff. Like, only me. Like, why shouldn't like, other people be able to do that? So this was not the community part, right? We needed to involve the community. So something which I was working on later on was the open design group at Mozilla. A lot of developers know how this works out for doing code contributions on GitHub, for example. You make a pull request, you talk about the patch, it gets accepted or not, yeah. So we tried to do the similar thing here. We created a GitHub repo. We invited a bunch of designers and developers from Mozilla, and we told the community, hey, when you need design, please ask us. And just like when you need a patch for an open source project or when you need a new feature, people were asking for a design. So they would be asking for a new t-shirt design and we would be working on that. And some of the goals was to facilitate the needs of the community when they need new designs. Because you cannot just ask always the employees who are really busy with other stuff. While there are like dozens of designers in Mozilla who don't know how to contribute. And then there was also this thing because the staff designers, the employees, weren't really in good contact, great contact with the volunteers, so they didn't know each other. And this was the place where you can meet other people. Because once a month, we would have a video call, which is kind of like video conferencing with everyone. And they would be say, hey, guys, uh, I'm, I'm Elio. I do this. And I'm really appreciateful for being here. And everyone would get to know each other face to face, virtually at least. But it would not be only like pull the request stuff where people could comment on GitHub, which is not really personal. So there was a connection between people, which was quite nice. So we had a strategy. We had like a few different things how we'd facilitate this. GitHub was a core repository where everything would happen. The discourse, discourse is like a forum software which also works as a mailing list. We would discuss things out there when we need to. And the monthly calls, once a month, we would meet up and talk about stuff face to face. To face. Yeah, face to face virtually, as I said. So you might know this. This is Etherpad. Who, any one of you used Etherpad, right? So yeah, Etherpad is like Google Docs, open source, but only for text, where like people can write on the same time. And for this, we used, we used it for the meeting. And, Every color is a different person. So we had like 30 people in the first meeting, which like, was like amazing. I was like almost crying, like so many people. Wow, that's amazing. And s such great diversity. We had like people from all around the world, from Asia, from America, from Europe, uh, so many girls as well, which is also always, always great to see in open source. So this is the repo. When you go to GitHub slash Mozilla slash Open Design and go to the issues, you can check out the requests people are requesting. For example, they're saying that, hey, we need a new logo for Mozilla Turkey. Mozilla Turkey doesn't have a logo right now, and they need one. And then we go just we click on that, and we discuss how we can help, how what's needed, and what else. So this is an example for Mozilla India. Mozilla India is huge. It has like 500 contributors at Mozilla. And they were doing the next meetup in Pune, and they were needing a sticker. So as you can see, the, um, this contributor is asking, hey, we need this. Uh, the, we need a sticker. It should require this. And different like um, inspirations about the style and the deadline. So he said, like, we have four, four weeks time. Can we please proceed with that? 
and afterwards we would be like discussing on the issue hey do you like this this is a monument in India in Pune where the meetup would happen so it would be something cultural related and we like discussed and ping pong feedback and we came up with this design so basically this is how like we created the design and because it's open source not just going to throw up the design we would also provide the source files and push them to the repo so everyone else could just get the source files and remix them under a Creative Commons attribution license. But yeah, that's not all, of course. We have also Mozilla Open Design. This is our blog. As you might know, Mozilla has right now a certain logo which has been around for like almost 17 years. But there's a problem about it. Like if you have ever eaten M&Ms from Mars, you know, like these little candies. They have their logo copyrighted. So whenever you use an M within a circle, they will reach out to you and they say, hey, you cannot do that. Like, no, 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 no. So Mozilla was doing the same. We had an M within a circle and like also some other problems, but this was one of the problems we could not do. So we needed a new icon. We needed a new logo. So as you can see, Facebook has the F, or Apple has the, well, Apple. Um, Mozilla didn't have anything like that. So we needed something new. So in London, like five months ago, we were working with an agency, with a design agency, which would like introduce the new branding and logo of Mozilla. But first, we would ask people, how do you see Mozilla? Is it the protector? Is it the fighter? Or is it for the good? Or is it for, for, changing, for changing things? So you just go through the gallery and say, oh, okay, I like this. Yeah, I think that, yeah, it's about changing things. Someone else would be go, oh, I think Mozilla is the fighter. And as you can see, there are a lot of post-its. We would gather these post-its and analyze them and see how people see Mozilla because as, as geeks and like sometimes within like a project we think ah oh, this is awesome this is great but like people outside the project might think something completely different so this was really great and we had like great wine and like great snacks so like people could like stay around for a bit not like on github so this was quite nice so we came up the agency came up with seven design proposals these are very early these are from july this year how Mozilla should proceed. So as you can see, they are very rough, they are not final, and there were like, I personally dislike most of them, and like a lot of people did as well, but hey, that's okay, it was very early on. So we had, for example, the, the dinosaur icon. We had like different, the open, when you're in, in an elevator, and you need like the doors to open, you press this button, so, we were thinking maybe we should do the open button for like being open, open source. And this was also quite nice, the protocol icon. So we played around with the HTTP protocol and made the Mozilla wordmark like that. Anyway, this was just to spark discussions and make people comment on things. So we are moving on with this direction actually, the protocol um, logo will be the direction Mozilla will pursue about the new Mozilla branding. This is like, I personally really like this direction as people like us can remember, hey, the very roots of Mozilla in 1999 where the internet was still something new and exciting, HTTP, and you can still read Mozilla out of this. And there's also quite some design possibilities you can use, for example, you can even have the Mozilla Bulgaria logo in, in a customized style like, like this logos here. Just remember, this is not final at all. We'll be like changing many things according to people's comments. So you can check this out. You can read about the open design rebranding and also about the GitHub repo where you can like check things out on these following links. I'll be also uploading my slides if you are still interested after that. Um, yeah, this is not finished. You need to wait a bit more. So 
We also have the Open Innovation Toolkit. This is actually not visual design related. This might be helpful for a lot of people, for everyone, doesn't matter if developer or designer. It's about, um, it's sourced about a set of methods you can use when you need to discuss about product development. So for example, when you are like a lot of people and you need to like come up with an idea and how you need to make a product, there are like many different ways how you can do that. Some people prefer brainstorming, some people prefer Trello-like post-its. So for example, we have a mind map. Like everyone, I, I think a lot of people know mind map. Um, you like create a method of how you go, th um, how you go through the processes. Like, and this is being intertwined. So this is one, one way which um, is documented on the op Open Innovation Toolkit. But there are of course also other ways, like um, classic brainstorming or competitive review. Like when you have a competitor with your product, you can quickly check out the advantages, the disadvantages, and similar. So um, you can also submit your own method. When you are in a community or in an organization where you like have various meetings and you like the process of how you tackle these things, you can submit your own idea, your own method on the Open Innovation Toolkit. So this has been uh, also the, the way how to approach things on a more research or innovative level, not only visual design, making things beautiful, which is also quite important. So I just wanted to say that like open source is not only code related. So whenever you like hear the definition of open source, it's also design, it's also translations, it's also about community, it's also about being open in general and talking in an open way and being in an accessible way having like chances for all people to contribute to. So as well, design can be open source as well, as you can see in these examples. So thank you very much. That was my talk and I would thank you for questions. If you have, have any questions. Yeah, we have time left. Uh, so, hi, uh, I'm a designer as well, uh, myself. Uh, a, a few quick questions. So, uh, is Mozilla your only client or you have uh, also, you mentioned something about other startups? Yes. And so, uh, the second one, sorry. Uh, everything is for free, which is delivered in the open source design network, right? Yes, for f free okay. as in free beer, you mean. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, uh, actually, Mozilla is not not my client, as in I don't get paid a single penny from Mozilla, which is fine by me because I like contributing to Mozilla. And for example, they also sponsored my flight to come here to talk to you guys. Um, Mozilla is not my only project where I contribute to. I have contributed, I'm actually a designer at Tor. You probably know Tor, the Tor browser. I'm also a designer at um, the Free Software Foundation Europe where I do some stuff and I2P, which is an alternative to Tor as well, and many other projects which you probably haven't heard of. <laughs> and the second question was, sorry, can you repeat the second questions? Uh, yeah, uh, so uh, it was combined. Uh, the second one is, uh, is everything for free in the community. Yes, yes. It's like for free. You can like, you just need to respect the license. Usually we use attribution share like license. So when you use a design from, from us, your design, your um, final design will need to be under the same license. So, yeah. Okay, and uh, last one. <laughs> sure. Um, well, design is uh, something that uh, everyone actually can judge because, he, because uh, they see it. Uh, in uh, such a community, I see a few benefits. Uh, first, recognition for the designers. Uh, then uh, some learning curve if they're uh, a lower and at a lower entry point. And uh, how how do you actually keep the balance between keeping the designers inside the community and uh, 
keeping also the high, highest quality level. Uh, basically, how do you keep the top level designers inside? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's a that's a weird balance because you need like good quality, but you still need to be open between giving people a chance to contribute. So, I, I totally get your point. Um, it's mostly um, this requires a lot of time, and like being transparent is like really time consuming. So when you don't have time, don't do this actually. But when you want, when you um, have time and want to cultivate this project, um, you can like invest some time and mentor some people who tomorrow, maybe not tomorrow, maybe in a year or so will be on the same level as someone else. So it's like, I see it as a investment into the community to work on this. Um, it's something in the long run. So when you need something in the short run, you don't need to do that. But when you want like an open source community to thrive, maybe in a year or two, I think that's the way to go. Mm, any other questions? Do you set some kind of uh, deadlines? Uh, yeah, like some people, some people are like, I, I post the request today and hey, I need it in three days. Um, like, no, sorry, man, like, we have lives, we have bills to pay, and we have all this other stuff. Please request it. Like, we generally accept requests, like, three weeks before. So, things like, hey, I need this for tomorrow, does, don't work, usually. No other designers here, right? Yeah, I see a lot of what you've presented is for um, outside of products, so like logos and stamps and, and T-shirts and stuff. How do you get on arbitrating between design decisions, usability, and programmability? Yes. So on GitHub, like, you have different tags. You have like uh, UX, UI, branding, um, illustrations and sometimes even developers. Sometimes we have a product which is visual, but we need developers. So um, this is how we categorize our issues, and we have like different designers. For example, when we need an illustrator, I know this guy knows how to do this stuff. S um, we also have, of course, usability, um, usability designers, so it's, it's a bit more complex design decision because you start having a proposal on GitHub and like people comment on that and you like ping pong feedback to each other until people are happy. So this is the best way I can describe it. There's no magical bulletproof formula for that. So you just need to like talk things out with people. And I've seen that sometimes I did the mistake of doing a decision without talking to people. So I was like, hey guys, let's go with this. And like people were like, why did you do that? You didn't talk with us. So like I learned my lesson there actually. And I think like when you talk to people, when you talk to the community, usually the result is pretty, pretty nice. So there's no magic, all, all fits all size for that, I think. Not sure if I answered your question. <laughs> Okay, and uh, how do you actually judge uh, which projects uh, should you take in, or uh, everyone can uh, can just uh, send a request, and uh, you consider uh, them uh, either to work on or not to work? And uh, the problem I see here is uh, exploiting designers like working for free if they like. I don't care when my new T-shirt company T-shirts will be ready and uh, I don't have a deadline, I have time, I can just uh, submit a request to you and get a lot of designs for free. So this actually might be a problem. This is a problem if you ask for things which are not Mozilla related. This is only for things which are Mozilla related. So, so it's like still within our projects. Um, like if you need money, probably this is not the way to go. But if you like want to work on your um, experiences with open source, 
I think this is a, like a really great opportunity because I think open source really likes good design, good UX, and we can really have a big advantage if we play with the big proprietary players just because they have good UX. I think like open source is so great, but if we just have better UX, we can like make such a huge impact. So I think like just keeping this in mind, you need to like look a bit like in the long run, there can be some pretty great stuff out of that. Are there any other questions? Everything's clear. Okay, if uh, you want to ask Elio something later or just talk with him, you can find him around the venue. I'll probably be most of the time at the Fedora booth, so just hit me up. Thank you very much. Thank you.